Thank you very much for having me here on stage. What I'm going to talk about today is inference at the edge, uh, how to lower your cost, how to improve safety, and also how to improve your uh, revenues. Sometimes, oftentimes, we get questions on where is the edge? The edge is at the enterprise, um, and um, it's an enterprise, and that's where you want to do the inference, not at the cloud, but you want to do it closer to the user. Sometimes you want to have your solutions air gapped, and that's what we want to talk about today. Here's a subset of where we get the questions from. I want to do it my interference, but I want to do it at my facility. And that could be anything from cities. You hear a lot of people talking about smart cities. People don't want to do it in the cloud. They want to do it in the city where the data is generated. And you want to be able to do the inference there so they can do it faster, better, more secure, and in a, in a closed environment. It is manufacturing oftentimes where the, you want to have, you want to be sure to do the inference at the manufacturing plant so that you can do a, a quick reconciliation of where your assets are, defect detection, uh, yield optimization, all about optimization. The other one is retail stores. People looking at how can I optimize what I have on my shelf, make sure that I have my, what I need for when my customer wants to acquire it inventory management. I need to do inference at the edge to be able to identify all of those things. It's entertainment. It's finding out where I have my congestion at my stadiums. It's finding out how I can optimize my queues to make sure that I can optimize my yield and optimize my sales. Just recently in entertainment, we were told about, well, we want to have a moving robot move around to where the people are so I can sell more sausages. I can sell more beer to my audience in in the stadium and we can show you some of that over here at our demo with our wheel me industrial sites are also one uh, where we get oftentimes it's it's about safety are people wearing their helmets send out an alert if they're not wearing their helmets it's campus it's uh, access control make sure people enter the places that they can as easy as possible with interference at, at the edge uh, by either facial detection or something like that it's again it's warehouses the large uh, utility companies, the warehouses, how do you uh, analyze what I have on my shelf, how do I make sure that I get it in and out as fast as possible. And it's places like airports. And these are just a, a small subset of places where it's of inference is being asked of. Oftentimes in these places we get questions such as, well, I have my cleaning robot roaming in, can I check what I have on the shelves so that they can tell me where I need to restock my, my stuff. It's it's a security robot that roams around and scans people in a, in a venue to make sure that people are where they need to be and un unwanted people are being uh, uh, escorted out of the buildings. Next one, I'm going to talk a little bit about the architecture. So the architecture that we're also showing here, we have uh, a server in the middle that runs the Ethernet private 5G core that controls the private network. You're now able to have a network like Telefonica, like AT&T, like Vodafone, dedicated to your private enterprise. Uh, it runs uh, on a ProLiant HP server, Ethernet Core runs right there. It runs with all the other applications that we have. The Realme that I'm going to show over here at the booth is a robot that roams around that is controlled by the private 5G network. There's also a mission critical push to talk application running on the same server. And then there's the video analytics that we're going to talk a little bit about. You can have wired connections to it, but you can also have wireless connections like the cameras. We have two in this booth. There's one sitting right up here that does interference or inference at the edge. So up here, we are counting in and out people going in and out of this area. We are looking for lost backpacks. We're looking for phones. And you can see that all being captured by this camera up here. There's another camera sitting up here, the corner up here. This is capturing another video stream where we are looking for other objects in, inside this video stream. All of the videos being transferred. These videos are being transferred over there to two radios that are hidden behind these walls up here and coming down to the server that is located right here. With these ones, we can generate alerts coming out to different people, coming out to phones, coming out to different systems. And we can, of course, see that right here at the, at the edge. And we're showing it all at the demonstration over at the booth. So the next one. Yeah, this is the server that we're using. What is different about this server is with this server, we have a partnership with NVIDIA. We have L4 GPUs in the server which means that we can run the inference at the edge together with all these applications, other applications that we are, are running. Again, we are running three applications on this, but there are customers that are running many other applications that they use in their enterprise. What is also neat about this is now this runs a full uh, 5G core network, exactly the one that AT&T and Verizon are using, but it all runs on a very small scale that is dedicated for your particular enterprise. 
the uh, video inference uh, AI application that we're using is from a partner, another partner company called Iron Yon. Uh, again, they use the NVIDIA GPU chip to identify these different uh, use cases that we have. Up to 30 different use cases are available at the moment uh, on the platform. And we can also ingest uh, camera feeds from either existing cameras or new cameras that you can connect to the platform. Scalable one, uh, up to a thousand cameras, of course, with a larger uh, GPU units. But uh, this is the application that we are using to run the inference at the edge and not at the cloud. These are the, the use cases that we are showing here. Again, there's a lot of different use cases. On this particular one, we are showing uh, object detection, as I mentioned before. On one camera, we are, we are seeing here uh, Cell phones, we look for cell phones, we're looking for uh, lost baggage. Uh, for example, if somebody leaves a, a, a backpack over here, uh, sometimes that can be a security risk for airports, for example, uh, and we're looking for, for backpacks. So you see these object detections, you see these green uh, arrows are basically detected an object. If it's red, it's detected an object for more than 30 seconds. So that's what we're doing right there at, at the edge. Up here, we are looking for uh, in and out. So this is a, an intrusion detection use case. We're looking for people walking in and out. This is also used by in, uh, entertainment, where you want to look for people where they're walking in and where they're walking out so that you can optimize your yield. You can put the hot dog stands where it should be. And it can also be for museums, for example, if you don't want people to uh, uh, enter certain areas. And the last one, that is the alerting mechanism. Actually, this graph here shows you how many violations is what we call it. That was that happened during this period of time, and the kind of violations that were were seen. And the last one there here, this is the the alerting mechanism to alert for when these particular thresholds are met. So, in a nutshell, that was uh, what we have. And I want to uh, welcome you all to the booth. We have another a small surprise over there, where we integrated the whole uh, AI uh, 5G with an, a chatbot. So where all of this is, could be pretty complicated for a non-telco engineer to understand. If I need to stop my video stream and I have to log in to find my IMSI number, to IP address to find out how to lock that camera stream. We have developed a chatbot that can interface with all this complexity uh, technology in order for us to, for example, say, I'd like to stop this camera stream because I don't want to record it for a compliance perspective, for example. I want to stop it for 30 seconds. With a chatbot, you can say, stop camera one, and it will stop the video feed. By doing so, it basically runs a couple of, of API calls into the different uh, elements and stops the camera feed, and then I can start it again with a simple chatbot. And there are many more applications we're looking at. For example, the WheelMe robot uh, that roams around over there. We have the same way where we want to say turn left and turn right. With that chatbot, you can actually run some commands, and it uh, human commands, and then it will stop and make the robot turn left and turn right. So and over that, that was it. All right. Well, thank you so much, Frank. Thank you. Thank you. We're going.